As I mentioned the other night, in all of the lists of the Wings to Awakening that mention mindfulness and concentration, mindfulness always comes before concentration. And I've mentioned many times that the Buddha's instructions for mindfulness are basically his instructions on how you get the mind into concentration. You start out ardent, alert, mindful. Bukha say on the breath in and of itself, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. And when you do that really well, you get the mind into the four jhanas. Now the list called the factors for awakening basically go into the steps of how you get from mindfulness to concentration and up to the fourth jhana. Starting with mindfulness, the next step is analysis of qualities. You look into the mind to see what's skillful and what's not. In other words, you approach mindfulness as a skill, and you're specifically looking for what you're doing that's skillful, what's not skillful, and what you're going to do to take what's not skillful and make it more skillful, because that's the next step, which is persistence. Say when you're with the breath. What kind of breathing is easy to focus on? What feels good for the body? And what's right for the mind? You have to take both sides into consideration. Because sometimes some very subtle breathing may feel good for the body. It's relaxing. But if it's too subtle for the mind to follow, you're going to have problems. So you have to check out what are the needs of the body, what are the needs of the mind, and how can you meet them so they'll be willing to stay together. That's analysis of qualities, which is the wisdom faculty and the factors for awakening. You're bringing the right view to bear on your mindfulness practice. And then with persistence, you're bringing the right effort. You don't just sit there and watch skillful things coming and going, or unskillful things coming and going. If something is unskillful, you're trying to make it go away faster. If something is skillful that's not there, you try to give rise to it, and then you prevent it from going away. Now, as you do this properly with the breath, as you're settling down, the Buddha says a sense of rapture will arise. That's the next of the factors for awakening. A sense of energy, a sense of fullness, a sense of just rightness being right here. There are some exercises by which you can induce it. Focus on a part of the body that's especially sensitive to the difference between the in-breath and the out-breath. Your hands might be a good candidate. And just watch them as you breathe in, watch them as you breathe out. And notice if when you're breathing out you squeeze them, any of the muscles. If you do, see if you can breathe out without squeezing the muscles. Now this spot, you might try this, is in the area around the sternum. Any place in the body where you're sensitive to this kind of thing. And when you find that when you don't squeeze it, a sense of fullness begins to develop. That's going to be the beginning of rapture. So very carefully breathe in a way that doesn't disturb that sense of fullness, and then you can let it spread. In some cases, when the mind settles down, it's more than just a sense of fullness. Charges of energy will go through the body. And as long as that feels good, keep it up. After a while, it'll begin to feel tiresome. You want something calmer. That's the next of the factors for awakening. You calm things down. As the Buddha said, you calm the mind down, you calm the body down. And then it's from that sense of calm that's first been nourished by the energy and now has had enough. That's how you get the mind into concentration. You know, the Buddha says it can be either concentration with directed thought and evaluation or without. In other words, you're beginning to go through the stages of jhana. And to finally arrive at the, four, 
third, and the fourth. It's at the fourth where equanimity becomes pure. That's the seventh of the factors for awakening. So this is how you get from beginning mindfulness practice up to the fourth jhana. It involves insight or discernment into what's skillful and what's not skillful, and persistence, the factor of right effort. And you want to energize things before you calm them down. Because as the Buddha points out, if you're starting out calm already and you emphasize more calm, you just put yourself to sleep. So wherever there's this need for energy, you are provided first and then allow things to calm down. That way the mind will be more stable. Now, there are a couple of things worth noticing here. One is that the Buddha says that as you go from one factor to, for awakening to another, you develop them based on appropriate attention. Of course, what is appropriate attention? It's applying right view to what you're doing, asking yourself, what am I doing that's skillful, what's not? What am I doing that's causing unnecessary stress? And what can I do to stop it? So this practice of going from mindfulness to concentration involves having discernment lead the way. In other words, you don't just sit here. You actively ask some questions to nudge the mind in the right direction, to nudge the breath in the right direction. Another point worth noticing is that the equanimity that you arrive at at the end is not just ordinary garden variety equanimity. That's what the Buddha calls equanimity not of the flesh. You start out with equanimity of the flesh. In other words, you keep the mind calm in the face of whatever sensory input there is. This falls in with the Buddha's recommendations to Rahula. When you start out the meditation, try to make your mind like earth. Whatever happens, you're not going to be perturbed. And it's from that point of view, that act of will, that you're able to develop the skill of seeing what's skillful and what's not. You need that solidity first if you're going to see things clearly. And then as you see things more and more clearly, then you get to deeper and st deeper stages of equanimity. Finally, the point where equanimity really is pure. Many times you hear that the practice of mindfulness is basically the same as developing equanimity. But usually what they're talking about is that garden variety of equanimity, just not reacting. But the Buddha wants you to develop something deeper than that, because the desire not to react is simply a matter of the will. As long as your willpower is up, you don't react, but then you slip, your mindfulness slips. Other desires take over. But if you can get to the state of concentration where equanimity is pure, it's a lot more solid than that, because it's a lot more solidly based. You've been through rapture, you've been through calm. The breath energy needs of the body have been met. The mind has been soothed, energized, and then soothed. And so his equanimity is a lot more stable. This is why when the Buddha gained awakening, it was from the fourth jhana, because that's the state of mind where you can see things clearly. The other point to notice about the factors for awakening is the fact that they are factors for awakening. They're not descriptions of awakening itself. They're part of the path. We're not here to arrive at equanimity. The equanimity itself then becomes part of the path leading to, leading to the deathless, which, as the Buddha said, is the ultimate happiness. So 
So this is why when the, the Buddha explains the path in different ways, there are many places where he talks about how when you practice the four establishings of mindfulness, then the seven factors of awakening get fulfilled. You're basically practicing mindfulness as it leads into concentration. It's a place where the concentration gets really settled, ready for the work for even more discernment. So these are the stages by which it happens. And it's useful to keep these steps in mind.